Hi everybody, welcome back to another awesome day, another awesome vlog. Today, I would like to share some more information with you that I have been learning in my life skills classes. Let's get started. Today we're gonna to talk about relationship priorities and the priority in which you should put the people in your home. For example, your husband, your children, yourself, anyone in that's living within your home. And this is the order. Number one should always be yourself because if you do not take care of yourself and put yourself first, you are not a good mother, you are not a good wife, you are no good to anyone in your family. So number one is always yourself. Second is the marital dyad. So second is your relationship with your spouse. A lot of people get this confused and they wanna put their children first and make sure that they are well taken care of. And absolutely, you should take care of your children, but before your children comes your relationship with your spouse. Number three is co-parenting. How you parent with your spouse, working together, making sure that you are a united front in front of the children and that you aren't confusing them by arguing about what parental decisions are being made and things like that. That's confusing to children. They want a strong parental home where the parents are working together to make sure that their family is functioning properly. And number four is your relationship with your children. Like I said before, a lot of people get this mixed up and they wanna put their children first and they think that by saying, oh, my children are number one and they're what I have to take care of first, that that is the correct thing. The problem with that is if you aren't taking care of yourself and you aren't taking care of your marriage and your relationship with your spouse, you aren't being a good parent. And the problem with that is as soon as you start having problems with your spouse because you are not taking care of that relationship, that definitely impacts the children in a negative way. They can sense the tension and they can sense that there's a problem. That is the order of the relationships and the priority of the relationships within your home. Next, we're going to talk about the children within the home and the roles that they tend to play. There are four roles. The first role is hero. This is the overachieving child, the child that is in sports and excelling, always doing the best in school in order to try to please the parents and to try to make peace between the parents in the home. The hero is the one that will always try to come in and save the day and take care of the parent that potentially is having problems. And while that is good for them to be overachieving in school, the problem is the reason that they're doing it, it's not a positive reason. It is to try to fix a problem at home. The second child role is the scapegoat. The scapegoat is the child that is always getting in trouble for attention. That child is generally trying to take the attention off the struggles at home, off the arguments between the parents. Um, it's generally a child that is either not showing up for school, is getting arrested, is finding negative attention in order to try to get the attention of mom or dad because they are focusing on their problems instead of focusing on co-parenting, working together, having a united front, and caring for the children. Number three is the lost child. This is the child that wants to be invisible. They don't ask questions. They just go to school, get their homework done, do what needs to be done in order to pass everything. They don't want any attention brought to them. They just want to be quiet, stay to themselves. They go home, they go in their room. They don't have a lot of friends. They want to be invisible. They feel like if they are just completely invisible, the problems will start to go away or start to diminish, which is negative as well. And the fourth role is mascot. This is the child that is constantly putting on a show, entertaining everyone, always wanting to be the center of attention, wanting everyone to look at them. They're generally either in dance classes or cheerleading or some sort of role in acting where they get to be the center of attention and people are always paying attention to them. Those are the four primary roles that children play within the home. What I would like is those of you that know me, I'm interested to know what role you would choose 
was me when I was a child, especially those of you that were friends of me, friends with me when I was young, what role you think I played of those four in my house? Just out of curiosity, so comment if you have an idea of what role I played. I'm just curious to know the people that actually knew me, especially growing up, what they would say. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. When we are born, we want to decide and figure out who we are, where do we belong, how do we do this thing called life, what's our role, and why are we doing this? We all have to figure out who we are, and the majority of us as adults and our reactions, our behaviors, our feelings are based on things that happened to us while we were growing up. They are learned. And we have a lot of learned behaviors that we learn from our parents and that we carry with us forever sometimes, unless we can just learn to tell ourselves that our parents did the best jobs that they knew how to do. And you have to figure out if you're carrying things within you that you feel hurt about when you were growing up. Maybe you had an abusive parent or maybe you had a parent that was just really strict with you or really hard on you that, and you're carrying around some anger about that. You need to forgive them for yourself because that is how you will grow and that will allow you then to potentially have a better relationship with the other people in your lives. We all learn our behaviors from the major people that we were growing up with, our parents, our siblings, even our grandparents, if you're really close to your grandparents, and we all have to learn to set boundaries. We talked about boundaries in my last video that I discussed from my life skills class. And when you're able to set boundaries, you're able to then learn how to move forward with your life and become a better, stronger person from the things that happened to you in your life. Everyone has experiences, whether they're good or bad, and all of those experiences are what teach us the behaviors that we have now in our current life. When we learn to use our restraining boundaries and we learn to forgive people in the past that have hurt us, whether intentionally or whether they were just doing the best that they knew how to do, Unfortunately, if we don't take time and use our boundaries, we can then put up a wall. And in putting up a wall, um, for example, um, we say things that we don't mean because we're trying to block people out that are hurting us potentially. And when we build that wall and we build um, this wall with wood and nails and put them up, we can take the wood down, take the wall down and apologize, but there's still holes in the wood from the nails. And every time you put that wall up, unfortunately, the holes never go away. All they do are grow. And while you can apologize, it's so much easier if you take time, think before you speak, and try really, really hard to only say things that are kind and helpful in the situation. Sometimes when someone's coming at us and they're angry or they're upset, we have to be able to use our boundaries, step back for a minute, and think before we respond. We don't wanna be the one that is now causing someone else to have to use their boundaries because we're being hurtful with our words. Anytime we're having a problem with somebody, we always have to know that we are part of the problem and we are part of the solution. And until we are willing to admit that, it's very hard to get to a solution without knowing that you're part of the problem as well. A relationship is two-sided. There has to be two people involved in order for there to be a relationship and in order for there to be a problem. And even if you feel that the other person is the only problem, generally, if you look at yourself, sometimes it's simply just that you are enabling them to continue to abuse you. you are staying in the situation without using appropriate restraining boundaries or containing boundaries and without appropriate boundaries that leaves us vulnerable to get hurt but it also can potentially cause us to hurt others which is clearly what we are trying to avoid doing and that is one of the reasons that I am taking this class so that I can learn boundaries I can learn that if I'm being mistreated I know proper boundaries in order to keep it from happening to me and either remove myself from the situation permanently or 
figure out how to put up the appropriate boundaries so that I can remain in the situation without it happening again. Our boundaries though are also to help us to learn how to respond to people appropriately and to be kind with our words, thoughtful with our words, and to really think it through before we say something to somebody that we're going to regret. Like I told you before in my last video, and if you didn't watch it, I'm going to tell you again. If you are in a position where you need to use a containing boundary, you need to remember the acronym THINK. You need to make sure before you respond, you need to take a moment, step back, and decide if what you are about to say to this person is timely and truthful. Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Those are the things that you need to think through before you respond to someone. We also always, like I was saying in the beginning of this video, need to take into consideration that where we grew up, who we grew up with and what we learned in that home is part of us. And if you have things inside you that you are upset about, you either need to learn to forgive the people that have hurt you, or you need to figure out how to move forward in a more healthy, appropriate way, mend fences, and figure out how to forgive the people for yourself more than for them so that you can learn to grow. So that's my video for today. Don't forget the top four things and the order in which you need to place the relationships within your home. You always need to put yourself first, your marital dyad, the marital relationship with your spouse second, co-parenting, your co-parenting relationship with your spouse third, and your relationship with your children Fourth, in order to have a healthy home, a healthy relationship with your spouse, a healthy relationship with your children, and don't forget you always have to take care of yourself first in order to be a good wife, a good husband, a good spouse, and a good parent to your children. I hope you enjoyed my video. I am going to be working on a, another video already with some things that I'm just learning this week in my class about the drama that we allow in our lives and how it can help make us just spiral completely out of control without us even realizing and how to try to rein that in immediately and to stay out of the drama. I hope you enjoyed my video. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!